It's time to shake up things again. This is our final debate this evening. So we have Mr. Adil Zainalbai back with us to carry forward the proceedings. Okay, this is the last debate, so we thought we'd make it uh, a little uh, more interesting. And uh, the House, in this case, the House's view is that India Inc. is bipolar. Our highs are too highs and our lows are too low. We celebrate too much during the highs and we whine too much during the lows. Are we overreacting? to the 9% growth that we had for four years? Are we overreacting to the slowdown? So audience, once again, you have 10 seconds to vote. Do you agree with the proposition that India Inc. is bipolar? Okay, you have 10 seconds. Can't be very confusing. If you agree, say yes, one. And if you disagree, two. And now while you're voting, I'll introduce our two speakers. <coughs> Sanjay Nair is going to speak for the proposition. Sanjay Nair, who heads KKR in India. Uh, Sanjay, please, can you come up on stage? Uh, you can either look incredibly high or incredibly low, Sanjay. You can't keep a, that side. Oh. <laughs> And uh, we're going to uh, not give France, uh, Frank a chance to sit down and enjoy himself. He's going to come and argue that uh, India Inc. is completely level-headed and that we are not bipolar and we don't need any medicine to behave normally. Frank. Sanjay. All right, everyone. Can I start? Yes. Good evening. I'm assuming none of, you, none of you know what bipolar means, so I'm going to take a definition here. We all have our ups and downs, but with bipolar disorder, these peaks and valleys are most severe. The symptoms of bipolar disorder can hurt your job and school performance. Bipolar disorders, also known as manic depression, cause serious shifts in mood, energy, thinking, and behavior. So just keep that in mind, okay, as you vote. From the highs of mania on one extreme to the lows of depression on the other. More than just a fleeting good or bad mood, the cycles of bipolar disorder last for days, weeks, and months. And unlike ordinary mood swings, the mood changes of bipolar disorder are so intense that they interfere with your ability to think and function. During a manic episode, a person might impulsively quit a job, charge a huge amount of debt on the credit card, or feel rested after sleeping just for two hours. But during a depressive episode, the, the same person might be too tired to get out of bed, and full of self-loathing and hopelessness over being unemployed or too tired. All right, so the whole idea was to just give you guys a sense of what bipolar means. Look, I think in India, especially the big, big companies are absolutely bipolar, the way we are behaving today. Three quick facts. 06, 07, business confidence, 72. Open to any kind of diversification overseas of local, any kind of acquisition overseas or local, put on huge amounts of leverage, buy any real estate that comes, put money into a power sector. If you don't have a power sector, you're nobody, actually. If you don't have an NBFC, you are absolutely nothing at a cocktail party. Go for it. Post-GFC, business confidence collapsed to 59. Then, of course, we had a lot of stuff going on. But again, the businessmen did not see through the cycle. They thought this is just a fleeting moment and it's all going to be fine. So more leverage, more promoter loans, and everybody hugely leveraged with some fantastic promises of putting on some fabulous projects with consistent tolling policies and consistent power projects. Guess what? Business confidence 2011, 68. 2012 and 13 where we are today, you know, somewhere muddling at the bottom between 48 and 51. So it's like this, this, and this. After effects, 
leverage all time high capex all time low that's a classic bipolar patient going through a euphoric phase and the kind of effect they have second point a bipolar patient loses complete sight of clarity they lose sight of the long term <laughs> the indian businesses have not even figured out how to have a sustainable business they get hung up on the medication all of us at ci are saying interest rates cotto interest rates cotto look at the dollar rupee this is not the medicine they struggle to get out of bed every morning these guys should be making investments now but they're not they're absolutely stuck in their bed and finally they begin to think unclearly they just don't see the picture the way it should be and i must tell you the media the rbi the planning commission and the ministry of finance all add to the frenzy so us debt shutdown well now it's open euphoric markets all time high i don't know for what reason china pmi is high so india is going up australia has a new prime minister in tony abbott fantastic for india nobody's thinking through the structural issues we face that's a classic definition of a bipolar patient so i think india Inc. is totally bipolar if they don't get out of bed now they're going to miss the huge opportunity at a 5% gdp which is still one of the best in the world uh, thank you dr naya okay. look Frank. thank you look i'm not a doctor but um, you know this uh, notion that uh, the performance of india's corporate leaders in india inc uh, is or has been is bipolar is an assertion that i would i would challenge um let me start by saying that if there's one lesson of the last 5 years i think that it is that in today's business environment volatility is the new normal um in both emerging and established markets around the world dramatic highs and dramatic lows are a regular part of our business life you know rapid changes in macroeconomic environment in um in markets in in customer demand in um in technology uh, are continuously shifting shifting the ground beneath our feet um and so i would say that in a volatile environment the ability to sense and respond quickly or, or agility is the killer behavior so the ability of india inc to respond to volatility far from being bipolar behavior i would say is just sensible way of running the business it's common sense business and more than that i would argue to you that it is a competitive advantage of india inc and of indian leaders i think if you want to understand the power of this agility you just have to look at india's economic performance over a longer period of time uh, as mr pai said uh, the 20 years um, the last 20 years have been the period of greatest gdp growth in india um, both in absolute terms but also in relative terms if you look at the 13 years from 2000 to 2012 uh, india's gdp exceeded the the gdp of the g20 in each and every one of those years and in 10 of those 13 years it exceeded the gdp of the brick nations that didn't happen by accident that happened because indian business leaders exhibited volat excuse me ex exhibited agility in the face of uh, extreme volatility let me just finish by saying that when i talk to ceos around the world my colleague ceos all of them are seeking to build agility and um uh, that ability a culture and a discipline of agility in their businesses in response to this volatility in a sense what they are trying to do is what india inc has already uh, has already achieved you know there's an old saying that one man's trash is another man's treasure i would say that let's not dismiss india inc's agility as bipolar trash but instead look at it for what it really is which is a competitive treasure thank you thank you okay i'm going to ask a couple of, uh, of my friends uh, from the audience to respond both to frank and uh, 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 dr nair's uh, advice uh, on what india inc should and should not be doing so can i uh, uh, first ask zia uh, another well known doctor uh, of law of course uh, about what her prognosis is as a good lawyer i have to take the middle path please both <laughs> the people on the stage but i truly think that i think that there's a bit of truth in both because i think india inc is so raring to go and so wanting to achieve 
and having the energy to do so much that when they face roadblocks, their disappointment is deep, uh, their um, wanting to get out of the low is uh, quick. As we say, we know we need only two or three good sound bites to make India Inc. happy for the next month. I think it shows um, how keen India Inc. is to resurface and regenerate and uh, reinvigorate itself. And therefore, I think you go through these uh, troughs, which are probably more extreme. Okay. Thank you, Zia. And <clears throat> can I ask uh, Raghav to comment on are we going over the top or are we behaving ourselves? Well, Zia, like a good lawyer, uh, chose the middle path, but uh, as a media commentator, I think I'm going to do a little bit more of a definitive comment. I, I believe we are, we are not as bipolar uh, a business community as we should be. Uh, and, and the reason I say that uh, is that I've been quite astonished uh, over the last two years when this country has seen uh, the most uh, uh, unbelievable uh, policy paralysis. I've seen a lot of business people seethe in silence. They just sort of, if you, if you catch them in, the, in, in, in a closed room, they have the choicest of uh, criticism to hurl. But when it comes to a public articulation of their anger, I have not seen a, a bigger conspiracy of silence than I've seen from India's business community over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, and that astonishes me because as a $2 trillion economy, we are, and we must understand, we are the second largest free market economy in the world. And we have a much greater obligation to articulate our, uh, our views and to believe that our views will matter. Uh, and I believe that uh, this conspiracy of silence uh, could have done with a little bit, uh, not a little bit, much more of bipolarity than, than was uh, evident. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I think quite a lot has been said, so I get a sense that uh, none of the speakers want to really use their rebuttal time. Oh, uh, sorry, Sanjay. You're no, going to I think a, I agree with, what's I your think, prescription, Sanjay? I think I agree with Raghav. I think Indian businesses have a fantastic opportunity in India, and they could have used the times when they were tough to be really organized, get cost efficient, get really slim, and keep a focus on the market. It's still a fantastic market, right? So just to be, have a doomsday scenario when actually at 5% GDP, we're still a pretty fantastic country in terms of opportunity. I think it's pretty pathetic just because you know, the interest rates go up. I don't think that's the only issue we have. So look, I think we have a tendency of getting just too high. India is shining before it's shining. And India is like nothing can go right right now. And actually, a lot of things can go right. I think that we need to have the temperament and the stamina to see through the cycles and build organizations. And a lot of them do it, actually. I mean, we have a lot of people in the room who have actually built fantastic, sustainable businesses but I would say a lot of us just make a lot of noise that everything is going wrong. And, you know, just four years ago, everything was going right. So I just think India could do no wrong. Now India can do no right. Look, I would just say that the, um, uh, the results speak for themselves. Um, I would point to the track record of the Indian economy and the track record of Indian businesses. I would point to the amazing accomplishments that India has had over the last 10 or 20 years. And I would say let's not confuse um, the bipolar rhetoric with bipolar behavior. I think there is a lot of bipolar rhetoric perhaps, but I don't see a lot of bipolar behavior. For example, if you look at private investment in India over a long period of time, it's actually been in a remarkably consistent range, indicating that despite ups and downs, there's a confidence in the economy and a willingness to invest. So, I still believe that India Inc. Um, is not bipolar. Over the last 20 years, we've shown remarkable consistency in responding to volatility, um, thinking in the long term, for the long term, and taking prudent steps to, um, to respond to uh, what will ine inevitably continue to be a volatile environment. Okay, thank you. And uh, you know the drill. We have 10 seconds to vote on the proposition that the House believes that India Inc. is bipolar. If you agree with the proposition, press 1. If you disagree, press 2. You have 10 seconds. Uh, I, you know, I, don't quite, I don't quite know how to interpret this, but uh, you know, this has been the largest swing that we have seen. 
So before Dr. Nair started speaking, you voted 82% for yes. And after hearing Dr. Nair's prescription, a lot of you change your minds. And you believe that we are all perfectly rational. So I don't know what it was, but it was wonderful. Let's thank both of our participants. That's, that's exactly the, hey Adil, that's the bipolar behavior we have, yeah.